Hey, welcome to Grammar Class. We, my name is Lisa Larson, and we are going to focus on syllables today. And I'm really excited about teaching this class. I think that the more you know about your language, the more you feel empowered to conquer uh, the things that you need to conquer in school and work and whatever it might be. So let's go ahead and get started. We are focusing on syllables and first off, we are going to start with closed syllables. Now, first, I better say that we have seven syllables in our language. And a lot of times when you look this up, they will say we have six syllables and some will say we have seven. So as you know that people have different opinions and they, grammatarians, they might differ in some opinions. And so I feel we have seven and so I'm going to teach it as seven syllables. And that's what we're gonna do today. So the very first one is closed syllable and these are all closed syllable. God, flat, 10, camp. And what makes these close is it forces it to be a short sound. That's the symbol of the short sound. And we have, so is what, how you know that this is closed is because, see, here's your vowel, and it has a consonant closing it in at the end. See, this is an open syllable. See how it says go, so it makes it long. And when you put something in, a consonant in at the end, it makes it closed. So same, same with this. So if this right here, depending on where it falls in, a, in the syllable, um, because you'll have lots of closed syllables in, your, in a word, lots of different syllables or in multi-syllable words. So it's important, the reason why this is important to know is so that you can break apart your words and be able to read them appropriately and then it tells you how the vowels are working. If you're understanding your syllables, you're understanding how your vowel will work. So look, this says flay because it becomes open or it say it's fla, whatever, wherever it is. If it's unaccented, it will say fla. We'll talk about that. Uh, we talked about that in the last lesson. That says T, 10. See how that's opened right here, closed. And then this says camp. See how it's closed in at the end. And this says K or K, wherever you'd find that in a syllable. So now we're gonna go into a constant LE syllable. So I just left it blank, but it's a consonant, not a vowel, L-E. So let's look at this, Coble. B-L-E, Coble. So it breaks right here. This is open and this is a consonant L-E. Gable, consonant L-E. So this is an open syllable, see, but this one, this one is a vowel team and consonant L-E. Now, consonant L-E syllables, there will only be found in multi-syllable words. You'll never find this syllable in a one-syllable word like you do with a lot of the other syllables. Um, so, but look at this one. See how this says castle. We don't say castle. This T is silent. Bustle, the T is silent. So you need to actually memorize these words to actually really be able to spell them correctly. There's not really a spelling word that, a spelling rule to help you remember this. You just need to study your spelling words. And hustle, the T is silent. So, now look at this one, eagle. This is another one that you're gonna have to remember because the E-A says the long E sound. So, eagle, so it breaks right here and you have your consonant L-E syllable. See how they're different. This is a T-L-E, B-L-E, P-L-E, G-L-E. Now, look at this one, smuggle. So we're just gonna go over some consonant L-E syllables. This one's a double G. You know it breaks right here 
because it's a G L E. This consonant has to stay here with it with this syllable. But so that means this G has to be doubled to make this remain short right here. So it says smuggle. Now, rifle, it breaks right here. Look, breaks at the consonant L E. Rifle. So look at this. It's open, so it's going to say ry. Now, when you have an I and it's open at the big, excuse me, at the beginning of the word, it will say I. If you have an open I in the middle of a word, it says I, in the middle of a multi-syllable word. So, look, jungle. Oh, you know what? I wanted to show you this. Now, you will find that many people break it right where I just broke it. And this is a unit sound. And I teach that unit sounds stay together. Ung, ung is a unit sound. And we'll go over all of our units. So I always teach that the unit stays together. So I typically will break it here so, you, so the child can remember. Ung is a unit sound, U-N-G. So you spell it that way. They know that U-N-G is spelt ung. And then it's a consonant L-E. It's still a consonant L-E syllable, but I teach to break it here. You will see that a lot of people teach to break it here. Uh, sniffle, look, doubled again, but this has to stay here, so you double the F to make this short. Let's look, see, if we took that away, it would say snifle, because this goes with this. So when you have a unit sound, that's the only time that you would put it over here. But other than that, consonant L-E syllable. Now look at this one. We're gonna, we're gonna break these apart. See? Bub bubble. You don't go bubble, but this makes it short. See how we just learned about the closed syllable? This is a closed syllable, consonant L-E syllable. So this B is here to make this short. This is here. Now a consonant, you have an E at the end, and the E at the end is to be the vowel. You have to have a vowel in every single syllable. So that's there to be the vowel. It's silent. This L-E says ooh. You don't, you don't have another sound with it. You don't say li or le. You say ooh, b, ooh. So same, look at this word. This, whoops. Now this right here is the same kind of break as in right here. You will find this in other phonetical places where they break it right here, or you'll find them where they break it right here. I teach that you don't break digraphs. This digraph stays together. You don't break a digraph. Now, when you spell a CK, it is always followed by a short vowel. You cannot spell a CK unless you're following it with a short vowel. So this makes this say pick -ol. pickle. So this is still a consonant L-E syllable here. So that's how I like to teach it. Now look at this one. This is the same thing. This CK is spelt here because it's a short vowel, okay? Spackle. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do this sideways. <laughs> okay, spackle, same thing right here. This consonant L-E syllable says cool. So spackle, spackle. So a uh, crumple. Now it breaks here. See that? Crumb, pull. This is closed, 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 consonant L-E, consonant L-E, consonant L-E, consonant L-E, consonant L-E. Okay, so now we have, look at this one right here, ankle. A-N-K, 
breaks here, LE. Now, this is a unit sound. I keep unit sounds together. How do you spell ank? A-N-K. So, we break it like that. Let's look up here at table. See how long table, it's, it breaks here, table, like that, table. And then this is an open syllable and it's long. Look at these two words, sellable. So this right here is not a suffix. So right here we have a suffix added on to base words. Able is a suffix. A, B, L, E, you have a consonant L, E syllable and then an open syllable sitting inside of it. So look at this word, sellable, sellable. So both these words are the correct spelling. This is the most acceptable and you'll sometimes find words like this because it was probably like this first and then really the spelling rule is when you add a vowel suffix, you drop the E and you add your vowel suffix, but it doesn't do that with, so you can spell it either way is correct. With this one, you have bear and then you add a right here. So you have bear, is your base word. And then see how this is a cons this is a vowel vowel consonant so you don't double your vowel suffix. But look at this. Your base word is issue. See how the u doesn't end uh, by itself? You it has an e on the end. So you drop the e and add your vowel suffix. So able actually means able to. So you're able to bear, you're able to sell. See how this one right here, you're not able to do anything because this is just part of the word. So this is not a suffix in this word, but it is in these words. So now we have incurable. Um, cure is your Latin word. word. And see, you would have an E at the end. Not, this means not, in means not, not able to cure. So look at this, forgivable. We're just gonna do give over here. This is how you spell give. This is a silent E syllable. And V's are not allowed to be at the end of words. So you always spell it with a V-E. That, so this is the reason why you don't spell it like that. V's aren't allowed to be at the end of our language. So the E is there to keep this from being at the end. So you would drop the E right here and add on your vowel suffix. Now we also have ible as a vowel suffix, but look, incredible. This one right here doesn't have a base word. So it's just part of your word. So you have that. But look at this one, risable. Your base word is rise. You drop the E and add on your ible. So going down to this word, commeasurable. Sure is has an E on the end. You drop the E and add your vowel suffix. Now look at this one, interchangeable. We did not drop the E here. And the reason why is if we drop that E, boom, look what happens. It would say intertang interchangeable. You can, you have to have an E, I, or a Y next to that G for it to say, to, for it to not change. So you need to be careful when you're adding on vowel suffixes that aren't an E, I, or a Y. And so we have interchange. Now this, is a unit that says ang, but when you put an E on the end of that unit, it says ang. So now look at, so we have charitable. This is able to have charity. This is your base word. Now in here, most of the time we change our Y's to I and we add on our vowel suffix. But this is a little bit unusual where we do, we drop the Y in this one and you add on A, B, L, E. So you always drop the Y when it's an ick 
uh, I-Z-E, so eyes, and also ist. But most of the time with ubble, we don't, but this is unusual. So in cure, in cure, so not able to, no, so we're drop the E here and then add A-B-L-E. Okay, so we are going to come to swindler. Now, when you have a consonant L-E syllable, you have to be careful. Most of the time you just drop the E and add on your vowel suffix, like swindling. Now, is what happens here when you do that is this becomes, right, it breaks right here. Swindling, swindling. So, you, and, and that follows the rule. So, this becomes a unit syllable and that still remains a closed syllable. But look, I'm just gonna spell the word, we're gonna leave that E, swindler. Now, drop the E and add on your vowel suffix ER. Swindled, E-D. Now, but you have to be careful when you're adding your suffix able, able to swindle. You don't drop the E here. A-B-L-E. So you just need to just double check and make sure that you're doing that right. Now let's go down to utile. See how this it looks like an L-E, but it's not, this isn't a consonant, so it is not broke. You break it right here where this says U, U, that's long, it's open, and this is a silent E syllable. Pimple breaks here. I mean, sample, sample, closed, silent E. Pimple, closed, silent E. I mean, consonant L-E, consonant L-E, sorry about that. So now, let's go over to here. So there are lots of words that say cool in there. You have C-L-E's, K-L-E's, uh, C-A-L, you know, there's just lots of ways and you have to really actually study your language and memorize some things to really understand. Now, if you know it's a, a cool, a consonant L-E syllable, then there are a little bit of tricks. Most of the time when you hear cool in a two syllable word, you're going to have, it's going to be a K-L-E, but it is linked to most of the time when it's a two syllable word, it's linked to a unit sound and it breaks right here. Ink, I keep the unit sounds together, but see, this is a little bit different. This, this is a Greek word because the, the Y is right here and it says cycle, which means circle, and it is a C-L-E. Uh, we have, so let's, let's just talk about this a little bit. We have C-I, C-E, C-Y, so this says Sigh because it's because it's open. See why well, say I if it's open? They make the I's and the E sounds. So this says this C I could say sigh or si, depending on where it's at in a word. This C E could say se, c or s. If it's at the end of the word, the C E say s. Just like we talked about with the G-E's, G-I's, G-Y's, and C-Y's, they say C. So if you want C at the end of a word, you don't spell it C-E. So many children do this, and you spell it C-Y. So now, if you want S at the end of a word, you most of the time it's a C-E, sometimes it's an S-E, but you don't use an S because that's the suffix S, and it means more than one, it's plural, so you use that. Now, let's go down to chuckle, it break, uh, I mean suckle, it breaks right here. This digraph keeps this short, okay? Sizzle, it, you have to double it, or it would say sizzle. Consonant L-E. So now, Bible and table, look, the I-B-L-E right here is not a unit sound. So, but this is a consonant L-E, it breaks right here, Bible, breaks right here, table. So I really, I really think it's so important to study your language because like I listen to people that have studied Hebrew and with the Bible and I love how they've taken the Hebrew language and it helps you understand the Bible better because of the way it was transcribed into English 
And so I think it's really important for you to understand your own language because you'll be able to understand uh, things because the Bible came, it was, came from Latin and Hebrew. It was transcribed back into English. So now look at time scale. Look, consonant LE, this is not, I mean, this is not a consonant LE. It has an LE and a vowel. So this right here is a, is a compound word, but look at this scale. See why, why does this say K? It's because it's an A, not an E, Y, or an I. If this was an I, that, then that SC actually would, would make it so that you were, uh, it's Greek. So anyways, the C, you, SC is Greek. And it just says, now we're gonna move over to a silent E. So silent E's, we have cake. See how this jumps over the A. You have one consonant in the middle and it jumps over and makes that long. Made, one consonant jumps over and makes that long. So now look, mad, you take the E off and you have a closed syllable. Now vowel R's, AR says R like star and far. OR says or like store, a lot of people think that, but in this one, it's actually a silent E syllable. And when you spell or at the end of the word, you spell it O-R-E in many, many words. Now I know there's some exceptions like the word or, O-R and the word for, F-O-R, but, but if you can get it in your mind, how you spell or at the end of a word, you would spell it O-R-E. So, but in the middle of the word, you would go order. O R D E R. So you don't do that in the middle of in the middle of a word. So also the sounds that say er are E R, I R, and U R. So that is our vowel R's. Now we're gonna go a little bit deeper into vowel R's because vowel R's change as other uh, depending on what comes after it. So we'll talk about that in another, in another lesson. Another, uh, we're gonna go into the vowel teams right now, and we're gonna start with the syllable vowel team uh, in EA. So we have EA says E, eh, A, and E. Bread, steak, and eat. We are, we are gonna have a saying for that, eat, bread, and steak, to help you remember. So we have E-A, ear, bear, air, and er. So those are the different sounds that you have for this. So look at sheer and sheer. So this vowel team says E, and this vowel team says E. Double E's always say E. But they have two different, they have different meanings for that. Sheer means right here this year means to cut like you're shearing a sheep uh in this shear means like a go a sheer cliff or sheer fabric this actually this shear has quite a few meanings so now what we're going to do for this saying and this is a great time for you to maybe take out a a spelling rule page or whatever to help you un, uh, keep these in order. We're, for this saying, we're gonna have Earl hears the bear. So we have er, e, and a, okay? So here's are some more words that go with e, e, a, rear, gear, and, and then we have ear. So let's go ahead and go up right here. So we have a silent E syllable, uh, another vowel team that AI says A, and we have pair. So these, these vowel teams have tons of homophones with the silent E. So this pair means to cut. This means to like a pair of socks, and this is the fruit pair. So, uh, 
sort to trim. So I like to tell my kids we have pear, the pair of pears. So that's kind of fun. Now, E-A-R, this is the only words where you hear R in here, heart, hearty, and hearth. Now let's go into the E-I and the I-E. Now the rule, and I'm sure that you've heard the rule, I before E except after C. You need to get that in your mind and memorize it. But sometimes it's always, and I'll show you when it, there's times where it doesn't follow the rule. We have die here, so I-E at the end of really small words like this say I. Most of the time they say E, so we have die, tie, vi, hi, lie, pi, guy, and phi. This word is a little bit tricky. A lot of people think it's a two syllable word, but it's one, it's view, and it's, it's just the, the W kind of makes that sound differently. Now, I-E says E, beer, cure, field, can, you can hear it, E field, and now look at, let's look at C-E, and we're gonna go in with when you see an E-I. Now, this looks like it could be an E-I, but it's not. Look, you have your base word, and then you're adding on your suffix I-N-G, C-E. Now, look at this one. This looks like it could be the vowel team DEET, but it's not. If DEET doesn't sound right, break it apart. Die at, see how that I now is opened and it's saying it's long I sound. So, but now we have one that is an EI and it doesn't say, it doesn't say DT, it says D I T. Okay, so same here. It looks like an E-I, but we have being. You have your base word with your suffix. Okay, so look at musky right here. So I-E is at the end of words and it says E, okay, at the end of bigger words. So at smaller words, I-E says I, but bigger words it says E. So, but look here, salient right here. It looks like it's an I-E, say, lent, li, lint. You can't even say it. But I'm gonna teach you a spelling rule right here. If you have an I or an E sound followed by a vowel, you, you say that I as an E. See how that says say, li, ent. So that helps for reading and for spelling. So if you're hearing an I, or I mean, if you're hearing E when you're spelling and you know a vowel is following it, you spell it with an I, okay? That is a spelling rule. I followed by a vowel says E. I followed by a vowel says E, okay? So now let's go back over. E, I also says A. And these all have, they all have homophones. So this says vein, veil, Rain, crew, this is cruzero, cruzero, okay? And this is saying A. So this is used in Brazil and its currency, and it, it comes from Portuguese, and it's, it has, see how right here, has its Latin root right there. That part's Latin. So lots of languages have Latin in them. So we have right here, E-I says A, but you could almost say E-I-G-H says A, E-I right here says A. Okay, rain, see how rain and rain, two different words, there's a homophone, there's another homophone that goes with that. Oops, my book looked that out. So now we have reef, See how this one and how peen, but look at these words. These actually have the very same meaning, but a little bit different spelling. And seal, some people are probably going, what's that? But it's like you're sealing on your roof. It seals things closed. 
Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the Val Team OY. So I wanted to actually put Joy Pop in there because it is slang for a narcotic drug. So if anybody asks you in school if you wanna Joy Pop, you know it's not a good thing. So now this is a compound word. A compound word means you have two separate words put together to make one thing. So that's where that comes from. Now, let's OY comes at the end of words and you, then you add suffixes, see? You don't change the Y to I because it's a vowel team. Or if you have a vowel right here, you don't change the Y to I. However you want to remember it, you don't change a vowel team or you look at here, if it's a vowel, you don't change the Y. So when you add on your vowel suffix. So look at this, coid. You know this is your coyer. This is your base word, royal, roy means king, doily, doy, boyer, boy, see? A-R right here, see how it says boyer? It is not accented, so at the end of the word, if the A-R is not accented, it says er. So look at goy-ish, see how this ish is your suffix? and you just add it on because you don't change a vowel team. So I wanted to show you some of these uh, words that are in our language because I want you to understand that our language is made up of different people's language. So this comes from the Hebrew language, which means offensive. If, if you say that is goyish to me, that means it's offensive to you. So now we have ne, uh, Noyad, sorry, we have Noyad, which it comes from the French clear back in the 1700s. It is an execution by drowning, but they took it from the Latin origin, which means to kill, and they killed a bunch of people by drowning. So this actually means killed by drowning. So now we have your boy, Soy, see how it ends in at the end of a word. You can't do O-I at the end of a word because in the, in the English language, you can't have I at the end of the word. So if you see an I at the end of a word, then you know, then you know that uh, you're, it's probably not an American word. Anyways, so we have joy, stroy, Enjoy. Now look here, we have oi. This is a bigger word. Uh, this, and it breaks up right here. Uh, ner, uh, yeah, a neroid, a neroid, okay? Now, this word is an old French word, and so that oi, it doesn't say oi here. It says divar. Okay, and that's French. So sometimes things change when they're not an American word. When you're going, what is the heck is that? Then you'll figure it out. So these are, we have also oi falls a lot into the medical science and political realm. And they are in lots of these, in words like this. So this says hydrocolloid, hydrocolloid. So this says barricadoine right here. But look at this, this right here is not the vowel team oi because it's barricade, barricado and then you're adding your suffix ing. So that is not a vowel team right there. So look, noise making, char, broy, char broilers. See how they're in lots of big words, char broiling. Now, I broke these apart. These are science and political words. So you can see, you've learned some syllables, how knowing your syllables makes it so you can read really hard words. So, this, let's do this slower. Alantois, okay, alantois. So look at this. This is saying a uh, because it's not accented. So it's saying ah, uh, all. Uh. And this says a uh, because it's the accented syllable. So it's saying the sound that you would expect, okay? And then in this one, it's not, it's not a, um, Vowel team in this one. This is an open, uh, and this one is a closed syllable. So now we have hexaploid, misjoiner, 
add in noise. Now, this one, you can't hear the E really when you slow it down, when you speed it up. It says add noids, okay? Um, Perestroika, euthyroid, hyperthyroid. So now, you can see the different syllables in here. This is a silent E, a vowel team, an open, closed, open, closed, closed, closed. We, we went over that one. That one is closed, open, vowel team. So, uh, vowel team right here, open, vowel R. So anyways, you can see as, the, as you understand your syllables how you can read big words. So this word says teloi, or it could also mean telos, but this says teloi, and it comes from the Greek word. It means purpose, goal, the final end, what do you want? And this came from the Aristotelian uh, time, and so he studied philosophy and politics. So if you're gonna study philosophy and politics, you will know this word. And so anyways, here is some just smaller words that we have. O-I says oi, unless you know you have some different things like this happen. So you have coit, noils, droit, de coit. See, like here, de coit. It broke open. Uh, pointedness, foil, oil, boils. Now, it's really important to understand how to break your syllables. So if you have one in the middle, it, it typically goes thin, not always. Um, if you can't figure out a word, bring it to the end and then bring it over to the other way. Uh, See, so look at this. One in the middle, it goes to the end. Typically, if you have S-T-R, they all go. If you have an R or an L, the R and the L pull those this way. But look, if you have two in the middle, it just break it. If you have doubles, break it down the middle. Now, we're going to go into the French language a little bit. Uh, this vowel team right here is an E-A-U and it says O. Oh, and it is 100% French. When you see it, you just know it says O. Oh. Like this word says Bo. My mom used this word all the time. I don't use it, so my kids, maybe it's because I only have boys, but because it means a boyfriend. And really somebody that you really, really like, your heart likes. Now the, now the French put X's on for their plural, and so, that's how they add their plural. So this says uh, bows. Now this also has a homophone, bow, as in tie the bow or a bow and arrow. But this also says bow, like bow or the bow of a boat. And this says bow, and this says bow. So you will have homophones in these areas. Now this word says plateaus. Plateaus, either way is correct if they use the X or the S. Now look at this one, a boy toe, a boy toe. So that's, see how you would know how to read that word because you know what this means. Uh, look at this word, this is an old French word, beautifully. It comes obviously from the base word beauty. You change the Y to I and add your suffixes. When you're changing your Y to I, it doesn't matter if it's a vowel or not. You, your vowel suffix, doesn't matter if this is a vowel suffix or not. You just change the Y to I. Now this one says bureaucracy. Now, this says O, oh, but not sometimes well, you will have it changed to ah, uh, depending on how the accent is, just like you would have photography. We don't say photography, right? When you add those two Greek combining forms together. Same thing here. This turns to bureaucracy, okay? So now we have an OA. So OA goes at the beginning and at the middle of words. You can't put it at the end because then it becomes and two open syllables, A's at the end say a, uh, so it cannot be at the end. So now look, we have O-A-R says or. So you need to remember, this is still a vowel team with an R on it, but it says 
board, head board, O-A-R says board, a starboard, cork board, sideboard, surfboard, blackboard, shipboard, paperboard, board walk. And so, you know, when I was putting, finding all those boards, I was thinking, oh my goodness, they just really hold things up, hold you together. See how the surfboard holds you up and saves you from the water. The blackboard holds all of your information up. Anyways, the headboard and the sideboard or the backboard that holds your bed up. But I was thinking how uh, about Jesus and how he holds us up. And I am a Christian, so I will incorporate a some of Jesus Christ into my lessons. And so when I think of board, I, I think of him. Anyways, we're gonna go over here to soap berry, compound word. See how you're spelling soap and berry the exact same way. Coal, see how O-A, they're in the middle of words. Hoax, see this is the beginning. Oat, roach, uncoated, box board, um, horsen. Preload. Now, this, these ones, stagecoach, sauce boats, steam boats. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about a compound word. See how it breaks right here. Stage and coach are separate words. You spell them stage and you spell coach and you put them together. You don't change any of the spelling. You don't drop the E um, or anything. If you did, it would stay stig coach. But anyways, you don't you don't change the spelling. Same thing, look, sauce boats. Same exact spelling. Steam boats. You don't change the spelling. You take two different words, put them together, and it makes one thing. Okay, now we're going to work on the vowel team OW, which says O in these words. Swallows, bows, rose and mo's. So you have the z sound here. And the reason why that says z is because all vowels vibrate. This is a vowel team. O-W is a vowel team. So it's saying O. Oh. Every, if, if you have a vowel next to an S, it's going to say z. So every vowel vibrates. So if you go A, E, I, O, U, if you do that, you can fill your throat and it will vibrate. So if you have t, try T, uh, it doesn't vibrate. P. So let's do the word jumps. See how that changes to a s s sound? So anyways, that's the reason why is because it's not next to a vibrating sound. Now look at this. Gal, vow, cow, now. Wow, bow, pow, owl. So these say, it also says the ow sound. So now, swallow. See how it's saying O oh at the end? Row, so, yo, bow, mo, Toe. See how bow and bow is spelled the exact same way? Uh, bow or bow or bow. Spelled the same way, two different, different meanings. Okay, so now let's look at this cow herd. We have a compound word here and it's two words broken apart that you have two different words and you're putting them together to make one thing. Each word is spelled exactly how you would spell it if they were separated, okay? So, brownie, the I-E at the end, saying ow. Lowland, now this one looks like a compound word, but it's not. And how you know that is that this says, it's schwa sound, we don't say lowland, we say lowland, okay? So toward, now there's a little quick controversy over if this one is a compound word, but I'm going to call it a compound, compound word to and ward. It's saying two different things completely and that is the accented syllable right here. And I'll teach you later why that AR is saying or. So O-W-L you have in lots of words and it says owl. 
Now let's go right here, Mose. Now we're going to focus, oops, that didn't, that's not, there we go. So we're going to focus on the plural S right now, and we're gonna focus on your suffix Y. So these both are suffixes. They mean two different things. They mean different things. So your S and the ES means plural. And so with an ES, you put them on anything that ends in a CH, TCH, S, uh, S, H, Z. I'm not sure if I, I think I got them all, but probably not. But anyways, anything that ends in a s sound. Uh, oh, so you would add those on. You would use it for this. Or you would, if you have it at the end of a Y, you drop, you change the Y to I and add your ES. Or let's say you have it right here on brownies. So you have the E here and you can just add your S on, and that's brownies. So you could teach it either way. Uh, drop the E and add your vowel suffix, or just add the S on. So right here, when you have, look at the difference, your consonant suffix, vowel suffix, vowel suffix, consonant, vowel. So that matters. So when you have a consonant suffix, you just add it on, this is a vowel team. You just add it on, you don't have to uh, do anything with it. So you don't have to look for spelling rules or anything like that, just go ahead and add it on. So now, also when you put an S, like the, the plural S onto things, so let's say you want to say the word surface. The, the plural S, you, you can't, when you put an S on the end of a word, it means plural, more than one. So let's say the word surface. And you're spelling it exactly how it sounds. Whoops, surface, okay? But this doesn't mean surface. This means surf, more than one surfi, because that's what that means. So this is how you spell surface. Okay, now we do surfaces, which means more than one surface. See how that works? So if you want a sound at the end, you need to spell it with a C-E most of the time, or an S-E. But let's also look what happens. Um, let's erase this. And let's talk about your apostrophe S's onto that. So you have, and I'm not gonna go over the contractions today, but let's say we have um, the word cows. Let's use the word cows, C-O-W-S, okay? That's more than one cow. But let's, if we say C-O-W apostrophe S, then you have one cow's, let's say trough, and now you've turned this into an adjective, and it's, one cow's trough, one cow. So but look what we have here, C-O-W-S apostrophe. Now this stayed plural, this isn't a plural S anymore, this is one cow and it's an adjective. Now this is an adjective also, but it's also plural, it's the cow's trough now, okay? So does that make sense? So now we're gonna go over your suffix Y. Now, the suffix Y, the meaning for that is it's characterizing towards something. So it's characterizing towards toe. And toe is just a really old word, and it says toey, okay? So same thing, um, we're going, when you have a vowel here, this OW, this vowel team is considered a vowel, you would add it on. You don't double W, see? Consonant, vowel, consonant. But this isn't a consonant, this is a vowel. So you just add your vowel suffix. Now Y's, when they are a suffix, it's never a consonant. It's always a vowel suffix. So you would add that on. But let's say you have um, a one syllable word. We're gonna put a one syllable word here, Tom. 
consonant, vowel, consonant. You need to look for that to double it because if you just put the Y on it, it says Tomi because this M goes to the end. So look at this, T-O-M-M-Y has to be doubled so this O stays short. So that's how you would add on your Y's. Okay, so now let's look at right here. We have toes and toe, okay? Toe, toes, more than one, and it is um, characteristic of whatever it is. Actually, let's look at the word cowie right here. Well, let's go ahead and go pows, I mean wows, pows, cowie, cows, see that? The Y characteristics towards a cow, and the S means more than one cow. So a cowie right here would mean the horse is characterizing, it's a cowie horse. It means it handles, it handles itself well around cattle, so it can be used around cattle a lot. So this says yo, I mean, yow, I'm sorry, it says yow, which means a female sheep, and so they, they're very similar. So let's go back up to here and let's like, go through these sounds again. Cow herd, brow, knee, low, lund, to, ward, not a compound, I mean, this is a compound word, but not a vowel team right here. So let's go right here, toe -y. toe -y. you're characterizing towards the toe. It's a really old biblical name uh, found in, in the Hebrew language. It means something shaken, something's being shaken out of you as you're being towed. So I really love studying about uh, about the Hebrew language and listening to people study the Bible. I wish I had time to, to study it in Hebrew. Uh, so let's look at this, okay? Ow and ow. So we have our suffix Y that says it's characterizing towards that and our suffix S that means it's plural. And we also, let's talk about the ES, plural. More than one, more than one cow, all right? So now, let's go ahead and we are going to talk about the O. The O is considered a vowel team. And I don't know why, but it's only one vowel, but it is considered a vowel team. But before we really go into this, we're going to talk about adding our, the O's, our plurals, onto the O right here, which is kind of tricky. So in some words, we just add the S on there. And in other words, we, so this one right here, we add an ES or an S. Either one is con considered correct for plural. Some words though, and this one is an S. But some words, it is not considered okay to just do an S because let's say the word tomatoes, it would say T, to may toss. So it just depends on the word. So I would be looking that up if you want to make that plural to see if you're going to use the ES and then if when it's an ES, it does the vowel team right here. Okay? It's the right here becomes the vowel team. Does that make sense? So just be careful when you're adding the S or the ES onto the uh, end of an O. That matters. So I'm gonna pull up my chair and I'm gonna ask Daniel, my videographer, if he will focus in right in this section right here. So I'm, is what I'm going to do is I am going to break this word apart for you so that you can see exactly how you would decode a word. And, and this is a really fun word. Now, right here, we are decoding words from Spain. So words that, that you look at and go, oh my gosh, I can't read that. There, you can read it. 
and it might be a little bit more difficult, but, but I'll show you how to break them, break them apart. Okay, so now, first off, I, you find your vowels, okay? Now, how many are in the middle? There's only one. So when you have one, most of the time, it comes to the end right here. So then you write your A. Since we have one, we know it's gonna come to the end and it's gonna be attached to this vowel. So we can put that there. But see now, let's find our other vowel right here. Two's in the middle. So when you have two, you split it down the middle unless it's an R or an L. Most of the time, R and L's, they snag that one and it attaches to it. Not always though, but most of the time. So we're gonna put the N next to this U and we're gonna put the T over here with its A. See that? So now we're gonna find our other vowel. Now, there's only one in here, so now you're going, you know it's gonna to go to the I. So it's M, I. Now look, find your other vowel, look. It's not a vowel team. Normally when they're really big words like this, it's not a vowel team. So this word, it breaks, and you know your E. So now find your other vowel. You have uh, two letters right here. So you know it, it breaks like this, and a T and an O. So now let's talk about your syllables. That you, some of them, one of them you haven't learned in here. That is opened. So when you have an open A's, that says the schwa sound. Short, this is short because it's a closed syllable. This is an open A in the unaccented syllable. This is not accented. So it says uh. This says me, because look at this. This I says E because it's followed by a vowel. When you have an I followed by the vowel, the I says E. That's a reading and spelling rule. So then we have a closed syllable and an open syllable. And now I'm gonna teach you where to find your accent. So if you can, you count, see how big this word is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you have four or more syllables, your accent is going to go. You count one, two, three. Doesn't matter if you have five, six, seven, eight. It's gonna be one, two, three. Now sometimes there are exceptions to that but this is going to be your accented syllable. Now, if you have a three syllable word, your accent will either be here or here, depending on the word. And if you have two, it'll be here or here. Now, most of the time in the English language, it will be right here, but if you're having a Latin root, it will often fall right here. And that really matters when you are trying to do your doubling rule at the end, if you know where your accent is. Also, it matters on if with your accent on how the vowel sounds. Anyways, okay, so now let's read this word. This says, a, yun, ta, mi, and to. Okay, let's read it fast again. A, yun, ta, mi, and to. A yantimiento. So see how you can just slowly break that word apart even though it looks hard, but you can break it apart. Okay, so we are gonna break this word apart. So let's find our vowels. We're gonna start with our B. Look, we have two in the middle. So we have B, A, N. You gotta break them apart. Find your vowels. So you have one in the middle. Now, let's see, if you have, this looks like a vowel R syllable, but it's not because it's followed by a vowel. Once that vowel is following an R, then that is no longer a vowel R syllable, okay? So we know the D, E is gonna go here, and the R is gonna follow the I. So now let's find the other vowel right here. So we have an L here, an L here, and then your other right here, E, okay? The L, E, and then an R, O. So now, this is a harder word to pronounce. Ban, it's closed, open, closed, open, open, okay? Ban, de, re. Now, see how this says E right here? It's because it's not in our language. Relero, banderilero. Now, when you say it really fast, this L turns to a Y sound, just like medallion. 
so it's a double L, but it says yun. So bandariero. So bandariero. So this actually is a is a harder word, but this is a person. See this this tells you that this is a person who carries the banderella, which is the weapon to uh, fight bulls. Okay, so now let's look at this word. This is a fun word to decode. So let's find your vowels. You have your I, two in the middle, N here, so you're gonna split it. So C, O, look, find your other vowel, two in the middle, you double, so you just break it down the middle, M, U, find your other vowel, so only one in the middle, so you know it's gonna be an N, I, let's find your other vowel. There's only one in the middle right here. So there's one, so you have N, I, so now you're gonna go, this C comes over to the A, C, A, now you have only one in the middle, so it goes D, O. So now let's, now this is not an American word either. So this will say ah, this A. So a lot of words, a lot of A's turn to ah when they're not an American word or an, an English word. Incommunicado, incommunicado. So closed, closed, open, 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 open. Those are those syllables, incommunicado. So it means that you can't communicate with somebody. So you've been incarcerated and you're not allowed to communicate or you've chosen to not communicate with anybody. And so now, look at this word, Bilbo. Breaks right here, which means sword. And I think it's interesting, like Bilbo Baggins. And I don't know if he chose that because he's the weapon, he's the sword. It's kind of fun to think about it. Ah, uh, uh, audio. That turned to schwa. Okay, see it breaks down the middle and D-O, audio, like that. Now I, I went ahead and broke these apart. Okay, so a, uh, fifth, this is an open I in the middle of a word, so it's gonna say it's short sound. I's and E's say they're short sound. Now look at this, this C-I followed by a vowel, that means that that is a uh, this is a digraph. So this says shh, so sha, okay? And this is going to say ah again, nado. Uh, aficionado, aficionado, okay? So now we have a, so that's an unaccented syllable, so it's gonna say a pio, right there. Edo. Also, ago, camo. Now look at this one. See how this one didn't break and this one didn't come over to the end? So if you said camo, you're trying to figure out a word and you said camo, then you can, and it doesn't sound right, just push this vowel over, make it short and say uh, camo. And this is the accented syllable. Okay, so, Alamo, uh, Buto, and chose. So you don't break a vowel team. I mean a digraph. Laticinio. Okay, Laticinio. Okay, M -ni -o. M -ni -o. Arrow. Not like the bow and arrow, but this arrow is like aerodynamic. Dato, adobo, bolo. So these words right down in here, they come from the, from Brazil. So as you can read, the, words that even aren't coming from our language, but they're used in our language because we have people living here from Brazil in America, right? So now we're gonna focus on the EU now, this vowel team. So we have guga, 
and ewers. Ewers. This is eu. Ewers. So like new, hue, pew. Not like pew, but pew as in the church pews, the benches at church. Jew. Use, I spelled this out for you so that you can see how it sounds. Use and hew, like hew. I'm glad I'm not doing that. Sin use. See how it says ooh, eu, and you. So it's really saying the long u sound depending on where it, what letters are there. So look, rewrap. But some people think that they, they'll want to say re you rap and it, it doesn't work because this isn't a vowel team. This right here breaks right here. This is a prefix. This is, this means again, and you're going to wrap it again. Re wake means again, you're going to wake again. Re flu. That says ooh. Now let's go over them again. Hue. Hue. Pew, few, um, mew, mewing, mewing, a new. Now double O's again. Brood, grew. Now look at this one. Re sown. So E W. So you have your word S E W. That means so. Um, also look at this one, goo, goo let's look if we put the suffix Y, it means you're characterizing it, now this noun has just turned into an adjective and oo-wers, see your suffix Y and your suffix S, oo-wers, see if you feel the er. It's vibrating, so it's making the z sound, but it's more than one, okay? Be wept. This is not a vowel team, it breaks. This is a compound word. Compound words are two words put together to make one thing. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the vowel team UE. So UE you find at the end of words because Use cannot be at the end, so they need an E on the end. You also have the vowel team E, U, but you won't find this one at the end of words because the U is not, can't be at the end of a word. So no, yes, there are some exceptions, but that's the basic thing. You find these at the end, sometimes you'll find them in the middle, but lots of them at the end. So let's go ahead Let's look at this word, grew. So this is a fictitional character. It comes um, from the Scandinavian. Uh, he, it's Scandinavian, and it means it means little creatures that live in the rocks. So this could. This is also a homophone. Grew, and we talked about that vowel team. So grew, grew. So now look, we have a noun and a verb, okay? Which means which means different things when you're when you're adding on your different suffixes. Okay, now let's just go through the sounds the UE makes. So do q hue su ru q. Now see this one starts with a K and this one starts with C and a K they're different, different um, meanings. This is a noun, this is a verb, okay? So now let's look at spew. And you know, the, the different sounds that come out, the oo or the u or the u, it's, it matters on what's, what's at the beginning and it's forcing that u to change its sound. So let's look at this word. You. Most of the time you'll see this word spelt with an EW, but it also can be spelt with a UE. We have glue. Look at this multi syllable word. In do. A uh, goo. See this one breaks? It's an open A. 
true clue. Now, right here, we're going to talk about this one looks like a Valtine. This looks like suits, but it's not suits. This is suets or suets. This one can turn to schwa. Most of the times, closed E's, they don't turn to schwa. And so, but this one for some reason doesn't. It's probably because it's not in our language. But this breaks right here. And it's two syllables. So that's not a vowel team. But this one, this says Louise. So listen to this. So it breaks right here. This is not a vowel team. See how this says, um, tss, tss. you can hear this uh, in that with because tss, tss. you can't, your throat doesn't vibrate. But ease right here, if you fill your throat, e, and remember, every vowel vibrates, and that why that, that's why that S says z. But look at this one, rude. That looks like rude. That is rude. Past tense, okay? And so you're adding, now we're gonna talk about the ED suff, uh, suffix, which means it's happening in the past. And you'll notice this in the perfect past, and this will identify your perfect past. And we'll go over that a lot, not in this lesson, but we will. So look, you're going, when you're adding on your vowel suffix ED, you're going to drop the E or add on your vowel suffix or, you can just teach them, if it's an E, you just add on the D. I like to teach them both ways. So let's go up to grew, grew, okay? So now you have to be careful when you, because this is a noun, this is a little rock character. If we want to put on our plural S, we have grew's grew. Okay, so you have to be careful. Now with the noun, you can add your plural S on any noun and it makes it plural. But when you're adding on your plural S with a verb, you have to be really careful when you're doing this because your only plural S ends up being in the third person singular present. So this, this happens, you put it in, the third person singular present. Other than that, it wouldn't change. And so you have to be really careful when, when you're trying to match up your subject and your verb. So anyways, just kind of wanted to point that out. We're gonna go into that extensively in our, in another lesson. How you, how you know when you put, when to you, you make the different verbs Plural. Now, a lot of times your plural verbs are plural through your helping verbs, and we'll teach when to do that also. So, now we're back to, so we cued in, right? So this cued means somebody's cued in to come in uh, to my camera. So we cued, like I, if I cued Paul in to come in, he would, he would come in here. So, um, that's a verb. It puts you in the past tense. So look at this, grew. But we don't do this. Oops. Because that's, that's a noun. Okay? Now sometimes you can, and I'll show you when you can put that on a noun because then it changes it to a verb when, when you do do that, okay? But when it's typically a person, you typically can't, you can't do that, okay? So now let's, let's look up here. This UE looks like it's the vowel team. So maybe that might look like it says fiqwe or fiqwe, but E's at the end, they don't say anything most of the time, okay? If you see an E at the end, it's silent, okay? So Q-U-E says K. It's French, now you'll see it in uh, French or Spanish. Oh, there's, there's, an, so there's some other languages, but most of the time you see them in, in the French language, and I think it started really in the 19th century when, it, when they really were able to spot when the Q, U, E 
uh, where they could find that in that language. So right here, this is a digraph. Two letters that make one sound. So right here, I know it's three letters, but we're, we still put them in the digraph spot, okay? So this does not, when we look at this, we don't go F-I-Q-U-E. So that's how a lot of children want to break this. This right here is a one syllable word. And it doesn't say fike, it says feek, okay? So if you hear like boutique, if you hear eek, you know it's spelled I-Q-U-E. It's coming most likely out of the French language, and but that's how you would spell eek, and that's how you would read I-Q-U-E. You'll have lots of words with I-Q-U-E in them, and so that's how that goes. Now let's look at this word. I broke it apart already. Fuel, okay? Now, this, all you hear is a ooh sound, right? You just hear... But if you hear anything that's an A, E, I, O, or a U, followed by an L, is its, its own syllable, and it just says U. Oh. It doesn't matter. This turns to schwa. If it's a vowel, then an L, okay? And it breaks up. It's not a vowel team when you see it like that, okay? Now, let's, let's read these words. This says ruez. Okay, this, this says ooh right here. And then this is a noun. Cues, cued. So right here, these are nouns and this is a verb. So let's look at this word, indu. This is a verb. We're gonna add the suffix ed to it. So we could teach it, drop your e and add your vowel suffix. Or just teach, if it has an e, just add your D on, okay? So this one, though, moo, this is a noun. And so we can't add our ED on this one because it wouldn't make sense. So sometimes you do, you can add your ED on, on nouns, but this one we're not going to do that. Instead, we're gonna add our plural S. You just add that on. If it's an E on the end, you just add it on. So here, Cues, this is your noun. You just add it on. Make it more than one cue, okay? But look at this cue. We have, we're gonna drop the E and add your ED, or we're going to um, just add the D on. So, in, and this is how it breaks, do. Okay, in, do. See, you have your vowels, breaks right down the middle. That's how that breaks. Okay, now look at this noun. Now, this says ruez. And you know that this is a French word because it has the accented E on the top right here. And the accented E says E, so, I mean, it says A. So if you've gone around and, and you see the word cafe, C-A-F-E, a lot of times you don't see that they have the accented E on the top, but they should, but I'm sure it's just hard to put it on a sign. But that's why it says cafe, and some, some children are, why is, it, why is it red like that? But it really should have the accented on the top, so that makes that say A. Okay, so this right here is plural, and this means not a very nice man. So I put this in here so that you, might know what this word means, or you might not know what this word means, and you've called people this. And it's just not a nice word. You don't use this word to call, it's a, not a nice man. And so, just don't, don't call people that. So, a while ago, my mom, in her 60s, she started using a word that she had never heard before, and she, she, just heard it from somebody else, and so she started calling people that. And after a few months, my dad finally said, do you even know what that word is? And she said, no. And when he told her what it was, she was mortified. She was embarrassed. And so just 
be careful with words that you're calling people. So look at this word, clue. Now this is a noun. We can add this on the end. So now how you know that this could be a noun, you would say, how I can tell if it's a noun, because so, sometimes it's hard to, to tell. I use an article. So you, there's only three articles in our language, a, uh, an, and the, and they are adjectives. They describe. Now 99.99% of the time, they will be an adjective. So this is most of the time safe. The other uh, half a percent, you would say that it could be an adverb. But if I say the clues, we know that this is a verb, okay? But this could also be a noun if I added your suffix ed, meaning in the past. He clued into whatever. So see how I have your subject, now I have your verb. So this could change this noun into a verb depending on what suffix you're putting it on. So if I decide to put the S on, right, it makes it plural, more than one clue. And so that's kind of how that works. Now let's look into your double O, okay? This, this says, I'm just gonna read some words, and these are compound words. Well, this one's, these two aren't, but I'll, woodland. See how this one turned to schwa? So this would, wood and land put together. Maybe you might be able to call that a compound word. I typically wouldn't because this turned to schwa. But look at this, mel room. They're, they're spelt their own individual sounds, and, um, and so you spell them their own individual words. Uh, moorland, turned to schwa. Uh, scoot snooze. So be careful when you're reading these. With the ones that have land in them, like island, it says is land. It looks, that's what it looks like. But so you just be careful with those. Now we have, listen to the different sounds. Soon, cool, ooh, roof, oof. See here, some different sounds. Zoo, loo. Room, voodoo. Okay, now let's go into the vowel team IGH. You have, and, and you'll find IGH often towards the end of the room or with a T. Firelight, night long, twinight, gas light. Now there is a twilight and a twinight. See, also, you'll find them just open, high way. There's no T. Delighted. Well, actually, it goes like this. Delighted. That's actually how it breaks. Fortnite. This is a compound word. So see how there's three in the middle here? You found your vowels, there's three in the middle. But you don't do a one-two split. That's how you would typically break a three in a in a in a word, not here. If it's a compound word, you break where the compound is. Head, light, up, right. See how that's a compound word. Tie, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Tie, ter. But your base word is tight, right? And you're adding on your vowel suffix and making it tighter. This ER means the second, okay? Okay, so high, nigh, sigh. So right here we have delighted. But look, what if we take that off? Delight. Delighted. That's you just add it on. It's not a CVC. You just add that on. Okay? Okay, so now look at this word though. E-I, this might look like an I-G-H, but it's not. E-I-G-H says A, eight. See, E-I-G-H says A. And you don't see these as often. You'll see these in words that you just need to memorize and learn how to spell. So this says neighborhood. It sounds like E-R. Even though it's an O-R, it sounds like the E-R. It's because this is not accented. So O-R's at the end of a word, A-R's, 
they, they turn to, uh, they say er, okay? So now we're gonna go in and talk about the suffixes est and ist. So est means the most. So you have, let's say we have fast, faster, and fastest. So we have the most fast, okay? So this would, if we have rightest, we have right, writer, and the rightest, okay? So, but look at this one. This IST means a person. So a person who is right. So this one, you have to be really careful because you have children that will put, you will see it on this word the most unless you have people that are calling themselves the rightest, okay? So just make sure that when you want the most, you are putting it on the, in here correctly, okay? So let's look at light. Light test, okay? That means the most light. But look at this, what if we did, that means a person who is really good with light. You'll see photographers use this word, I am a lightest. It's because they are really very good with light. So just make sure that your child understands this. This is something that is often mistaken. Okay, now look at this. This looks like it's the vowel team, I-G-H, but it's not. It breaks right here. It's a compound word, pig head, but, and with suffixes added to it, okay? So pig head edness, pig headedness. Actually, probably pig head deadness. That's how you would break that. Probably more like right there. That's, sorry about that. So it breaks right there, pig head deadness. So that, you wouldn't say pie headedness. You wouldn't read it like that. So if it doesn't make sense, see if it's a compound word and break it into its compound. All right, that's it for this lesson. It was a really long lesson and it's, it was a really long lesson, but it has so much of great information and I plead for some patience on some of my uh, little bit of a couple of errors. But anyways, we'll see you in the next lesson.